Uh, my name is Joe Smith from the Open University. Um, I should say the first thing that's relevant about that is that um, I, I am, uh, with 150,000 students that we never see, I am just pathetically grateful to have some real human beings to uh, interact <laughs> with. So uh, thanks very much. I was tempted to give five minutes of my time to each of these two because I just wanted to keep on listening to them. Um, but my mother would be very disappointed. So um, you are going to get ten minutes of me. Um, Changing media landscape. This can be read two ways, of course. Uh, changing media landscape, we tell you what is changing in the media landscape. Read it as a text message, change, changing media landscape. I'm off changing the media landscape. I think that is what I'd like to introduce as a thought to you. Your potential now to change the media landscape. Of course, that's only recently been possible. If we look first of all at what we might have thought of as media. I'm going to particularly talk about non-news media, actually, and that nicely complements Fiona's, um, uh, Fiona's work. Um, we would think of television above all, the most influential uh, medium of recent decades. Now, I want to suggest that a change that uh, Andrew and his colleagues face is that uh, they no longer have um, viewers uh, that they can simply throw things at and be pretty confident in the right slots that they'll get uh, viewers uh, or listeners. Um, we have both uh, consumers and citizens scheduling their own lives uh, through a, a range of different means. They have a very high degree of choice. Now, uh, your mission uh, is to engage people in environmental change, biodiversity loss, uh, conservation. Now, on the left-hand uh, side, we have uh, one of the very well-established routes to trying to do that effectively, and actually I believe it has. I have to say I'd give a much more <coughs> generous account of, of the BBC than, than, than uh, was suggested by some questions um, in terms of the pace of the change in public engagement with these issues across 20 years. I think we should remind ourselves how remarkable that is. However, everyone now has the power to choose either to program their whole lives around ent entertainment um, and the opportunity for, you know, 40% of the population to uh, live uh, in a media sense solely uh, with the members of Top Gear. Now, <laughs> that is really difficult for someone in Andrew's position and for all of you in terms of breaking through to ensure that we can incite a, a, a love of the natural world in people at whatever age in life they're at or whatever concerns them. It's constantly got to break through. So actually, um, two weeks with, a, holiday, uh, with a, a Hollywood star in a tent in Mongolia is only the beginning of it in this new media landscape. Now, your pot potential to, 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 uh, to change the media landscape comes from this. Now, of course, um, I should say I borrowed this slide from uh, an Open University colleague. Um, yes, <laughs> another middle-aged man uh, who, who views the... Um, the uh, user as uh, an, an attractive young woman. And um, uh, it's, it's desperate, really, these sort of <laughs> insights that creep out in PowerPoint <coughs> design. Um, these are trusted international media brands. Five years ago, they would dominate the media space. The truth is now, many people, particularly the digital natives, um, people 28 and under, people who grew up in this landscape, are threading their life together in media terms in a mixture of ways. A couple of quick points about that. The way they build up that uh, media landscape, or I think it's more sensible to call it a patchwork, is obviously through these trusted brands. They know to go to them. Someone said they go to bbc.co.uk uh, every day. But they also work through a whole bundle of others. And a lot of that is built through networks of trust, not just face-to-face -face trust, but trust that's built up through specific interests. Now. All of you have opportunities to invest in that, to build that, to build networks of commitment, engagement, uh, concern. And uh, I think, actually, we've got a really exciting moment for people who uh, have really, you know, content that's rich in values, this question of valuing uh, the invaluable. You have a great opportunities to engage people in new ways that didn't exist before. All of those barriers to engagement around the costs of digital production and, and the costs of presentation have come just crashing down. So you've, at one level, got no excuse.